In this video, we're going to talk about force. In physics, force can be defined as a push or a pull. And uh, another way to look at it is that force is going to cause a change in an object's motion. And if we want to get even more specific, force is going to cause an object to accelerate. It was originally thought that force is required for motion. However, we now know that force is only required to change motion. It was Galileo Galilei who corrected the, this view of force. The main contribution of Galileo was in the understanding that force is not necessary for maintaining that motion. Galileo developed a concept called inertia. And inertia is a term used to describe the ability of an object to resist changes in motion. So if an object is at rest, it wants to stay at rest. But also if an object is moving, it wants to keep on moving. Now our inertia is directly related to mass. And so a more massive object is going to have more inertia, in other words, more tendency to remain uh, in its current state of motion, whether it's at rest or already moving. We can illustrate the concept of, mer of inertia like this. Imagine standing at the top of a hill and, and kicking stones down the hill. It'd be pretty easy to kick small stones down the hill, but now imagine that you're trying to kick a really large boulder down the hill. A large, massive object is going to have a lot more of a uh, inertia, and so it's going to be more difficult to change its state of motion. Now, Galileo explained his concept of inertia using this experiment. He built this ramp. It's kind of like a half pipe for a skateboard. And he placed a smooth steel ball at the top of his uh, one side of the ramp, and he let it go. And what he noticed is that the ball would travel down the ramp, and it would get almost to the same height that it started at, on the other side of the ramp. So it just was a tiny bit lower, but it got really close. And what he noticed is that the smoother he could make his ramp, the closer the ball would get to uh, moving back to the top of the ramp, being at the same height. So what he came up with a theory that if he could completely uh, remove all friction, which he kind of thought was the force opposing the motion of that ball. If he can make this ramp as smooth as possible, it could essentially just keep on moving up and down forever and it would never stop. Later on, Isaac Newton came along and Isaac Newton is really credited with uh, a lot of our understanding of motion, and especially force. Isaac Newton came up with three laws of motion and we'll get into those in a later video. But we will mention now that the unit of force is actually called a Newton. And we use the symbol N uh, for force. So we always talk about force in measurements of Newtons. And we can actually calculate force using an equation that looks like this. F is going to be equal to mass times acceleration. Now there are different types of forces. And one of the ways that we can categorize these forces are by uh, contact forces as one type and non-contact forces as the other type. Uh, contact forces can also be known as mechanical forces and they really do mean what they look like they should mean. Uh, contact forces have to have matter in direct contact with each other. So some examples would be an applied force and this would be like you pushing on an object and actually moving that object. Another example is air resistance. And air resistance is uh, where air, actually the air molecules, are pushing against an object, trying to slow it down. Uh, another example is compression. And compression would be squeezing an object to change its shape. You'd actually be moving the object. A couple other examples are tensile force and friction. Tensile is actually tearing something apart, and then friction would be anything that's going to oppose motion, essentially. Now, non-contact forces, on the other hand, can also be described as forces uh, at a distance. And some examples of non-contact forces are gravitational, uh, electric force, and magnetic force. Uh, these forces can be felt over a great distance, and matter doesn't have to be actually in contact for these forces to occur. Another category of forces is called the fundamental forces. And these are the four fundamental forces. We have gravitational force, electromagnetic, and the strong and the weak force. These forces essentially are at the core of controlling, or in other words, mediating how matter interacts with each other. Gravitational force uh, is a long-range force that all objects in the universe are going to exert. 
it's such a long range force that it's actually considered to have an infinite range. And it's actually the weakest of the four fundamental forces. Now it's directly related to mass. So the more mass of an object is, the greater the gravitational force. And so this is why the Earth has more gravity than the Moon. Now it's weird to think of gravity as such a weak force, but it really is. If you think about how huge the Earth has to be for us to stick to it, and even with the, the massive size of the Earth, we can still escape its gravitational force. Even just by using our own puny leg muscles, we can jump, thus escaping the gravitational force of the Earth uh, to an extent. Electromagnetic force is really a combination of electricity and magnetism. Now it's also uh, a long range force and it has an infinite range just like gravity. It's the force that's going to hold a positive charge and a negative charge together. And it's also the force that causes magnets to stick together uh, or even stick to something that is metal. Finally, the strong and weak force are both forces that are involved in keeping subatomic particles held together. Subatomic particles are the uh, stuff inside the atom, so protons, neutrons, and electrons. Uh, these forces are actually going to be responsible for nuclear decay, which causes radiation. And the strong force is actually the strongest force in the universe. It's the force that's responsible for holding two protons together. And protons are actually uh, two positively charged particles, and so they do not want to stick together, yet the strong force is going to hold them together. And that is a brief introduction to force.